الحمد لله All praise is due to Allah, the one who designated du'a as a means to attaining an abundance of his favor. I praise Allah as he is perfect in every way and I implore him to grant us many blessings. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partner. He alone is the Almighty and Most Majestic. I further bear witness that our Prophet Muhammad is Allah's worshipping servant and messenger. He was the best in calling people to his Lord. He spoke the best of words and he praised and glorified his Lord for a long portion of his nights. O Allah, grant your commendation to your messenger, to the messenger's family and companions, and to all who continue following their path. Dear Muslims, you must observe taqwa of Allah by fulfilling his commands and avoiding his prohibitions. You must also hasten to perform deeds before times of illness or fear. Prepare for yourselves an ample share of righteous deeds before time runs out. Follow sins with righteous deeds that wipe them away. Remain constant and making dua when adversity strikes. And stay in your homes at times when harm and illness may suddenly afflict you. Dear Muslims, the events occurring throughout the lives of people, continue to let them know that they are in absolutely dire need of Allah. Those events make people know that no matter how far they reach in achieving their soaring aspirations and all that their vast horizons encompass, and no matter how much control and authority they may have in all parts of the world as they move about in their endeavors, there always remains beyond them a higher power, authority, ability, and will that outdoes any power, authority, ability, and will that they may have. This is the way that Allah decreed for things to be in this world. He makes people return to Him due to hardships. And He provides treatment for the arrogance of humans by afflicting them with trials that make them witness their own feebleness. It is absolutely true that the defiantly disobedient human violates the limits set by Allah. That is because he thinks he has no need for Allah. The return of all will surely be to your Lord alone. Servants of Allah, people generally remain in a state of heedlessness until a problem wakes them up. When adversity strikes, that is when they awaken. Once awake, they remember their Lord from whom they had turned away and they realize that they had let themselves be led astray by false hopes and by the evils and deceptive schemes of shaitan. When people awaken from heedlessness and disobedient inclinations, they begin to have strong feelings of their need for their guardian Lord. They recognize that they cannot do without Him for even the blink of an eye. There are times when they look around themselves and recognize that they are surrounded by the clutches of hardship and have been taken captive by the shackles of illness and adversity and no other person's strength can provide them with any assistance or give them any way out. At such times, they swiftly take recourse to the one in whose hand all strength lies, the one to whom all matters ultimately return, and the one who owns all honor and might. As a result, nothing becomes more important and beloved to them than making dua to Allah. That gives them their greatest means to Him and makes them attached to Him above all else regarding attaining goodness for themselves. How could people not make dua to Allah despite the fact that he urged them to do so. He told his messenger, if my servants ask you about me, tell them that I am most certainly near. I answer the dua of those who call upon me whenever they do so. Thus they must respond to my call and have iman in me so as to attain guidance. How could people not make dua to Allah? How could people not make dua to Allah despite the fact that making dua was the course of the prophets who preceded us and it was the means by which they attained the immense goodness they were granted? It was because of dua that Allah guided some of his servants to repent and he accepted their repentance. Dua had a major role in victories granted to Allah's servants over their opponents. Because of dua, there have been innumerable times that Allah granted guidance to the astray, well-being to the ailing, relief to those in dire straits, protection against harms and trials and defense against schemes and lies. If you find that remarkable, consider some unmistakable instances of those things mentioned in the Quran. The forefather of mankind, Adam, may Allah him continue protection, made dua along with his wife. The two of them said, Our Lord, we have indeed wronged ourselves, and if you do not forgive us and have mercy upon us, we will certainly be among those who lose everything. Consequently, Allah accepted their repentance, granting them guidance and favor them over others. 
the Prophet Nuh was supported by Allah with waves that were like mountains. Allah said, and prior to the Prophets Ibrahim and Lut, the Prophet Nuh called out to his Lord. We answered his prayer and saved him as well as his family who accepted his message from great distress. We supported him against people who denied our evidences. They were individuals who perpetrated terrible evils and we drowned all of them in the flood as a result. There was also the Prophet Musa along with his brother, the Prophet Harun. After Fir'aun schemed against them, each of them made dua to Allah in earnest by saying, Our Lord, you granted Fir'aun and his chiefs various types of adornments and wealth in the life of this world. However, our Lord, they ended up using that to lead people away from your path. Our Lord, I implore you to transfigure and eradicate their wealth. And I implore you to harden their hearts and place a seal over them such that they would not accept the truth until they actually see the excruciating punishment, at which point it would be too late for them. Allah responded, the dua from the two of you has certainly been answered. After that, Musa and those with him were granted support, strength, and authority, while Fir'aun and his troops were disgraced and made into a lesson for others. There was also the prophet Zechariah. He desired to have offspring who would succeed him, but he had reached old age and his wife was barren. At that point, Zechariah made dua to his Lord, saying, My Lord, grant me from yourself righteous offspring. You most certainly hear all prayers. Later on, the angels called out to him while he was standing in prayer at his place of worship. They said, Allah conveys to you the glad tidings of a son named Yahya. He will believe in the word from Allah, that being the prophet Asa. He will be knowledgeable, be a leader of high standing, be someone who avoids all disobedient inclinations, and be a prophet who is among the most righteous of people. There was also the prophet Ayyub. He had experienced harms and ailments for numerous years to such an extent that physicians despaired of him recovering and even the nearest of people to him forsook him. However, he made dua to his Lord as an obedient and penitent servant. Allah told his messenger, remember and inform the people about Ayyub and he called out to his Lord saying, I have been stricken by hardship and you are the most merciful of all who show mercy, so grant me relief. Thus he responded to him, remove the hardship he faced and restored his family to him and even more along with them. That was a mercy from us and a reminder to all obedient worshiping servants that they should persevere as Ayyub did. There was also the prophet Yunus ibn Matta. Did anything rescue him from the belly of an enormous fish besides making dua and proclaiming Allah's perfection? Allah told his messenger, remember and inform the people about the noon when he angrily left his people. He presumed we would not put him through difficulty as a result of what he did. Thus, he called out from beneath the layers of darkness. There is none worthy of worship except you, the one who is perfect in every way. I was indeed among those who perpetrated tremendous wrongdoing. As a result, we responded to him and rescued him from the distress he was in. And that is how we rescued the people of Iman. Dear people of Iman, the preceding were some instances of Allah's prophets making dua to him. There are instances which tell everyone near and far that dua holds the role of a key to change, a gate to a new beginning, a herald of goodness, glad tidings of attaining support, a path to overcoming difficulties, a resort for those in fear, a point of reference for the hopeful, and an objective of those who seek to have their needs fulfilled. May Allah enable all of us to glean guidance from his book and the son of his prophet who repented very often. I implore Allah to forgive myself and all of you for every sin. Thus you must also ask Allah's forgiveness since he should certainly be the most beloved to all who repent and ask forgiveness. Indeed all praise is due to Allah. We praise him, seek his assistance and ask his forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evils of our own selves and from the evil results of our actions. If Allah guides someone, none can lead that person astray. And if Allah leaves someone to stray, none can guide him. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad is Allah's worshipping servant and messenger. May Allah grant an abundance of his commendation and protection to his messenger and to the messenger's family and companions. Dear Muslims, Dua yielded the desired results in the case of the prophets and those who followed their path. However, Dua does not yield the desired results unless the person making Dua is strong in his certainty about Allah, humbles himself completely to Allah, recognizes his total need for Allah, ensures that his nourishment comes from permissible sources, places his full hope in Allah, persists in making dua without growing weary, and seizes the times and circumstances in which dua is most likely to be answered. When those factors are in place, that is when the gates of the heavens will be open for a person. He will be provided with what he hopes to attain, and he will be safeguarded against what he fears. After Allah mentioned the fact that he responded at the various times when his prophets made dua to him, he stated, they hastened to perform righteous deeds, they made dua to us out of hope and fear, and they remained humble towards us. Allah the Most Exalted also said, make dua to your Lord in private with full humility. He certainly does not love those who violate the bounds he has set. Do not spread any form of disobedience to Allah upon the earth after he himself has put the earth in order. 
You must sincerely make dua to Allah while fearing His punishment and hoping for His mercy. Allah's mercy and reward are indeed near for people who worship Allah in the best way and deal with the servants in the best manner. Servants of Allah, aim your dua correctly by performing righteous deeds, hastening to tread paths leading to goodness, and always remaining obedient to Allah. When you do that, you will have sound direction and you will attain what you request of Allah. In addition, let dua in times of ease be the strongest preparation you make for dua in times of difficulty. Your Prophet, may Allah grant commendation and protection, said, make yourself known to Allah with obedience in times of ease. When you do that, He will know you by granting you relief and support in times of adversity. The Prophet, may Allah grant commendation and protection, also said, if a person would be happy to have Allah answer his dua in times of difficulty and hardship, he must make dua often during times of ease. Oh Allah, we stretch out our hands to you and we call upon you alone. None has the right to be worshipped except you. You have the ability to do all things all that you need to say is be and whatever you all that you need to say is be and whatever you will comes into being oh Allah you are the one who overpowers all else and nothing can overpower you oh Allah we call upon you by the most beloved of names to you we call upon you by your greatest name we call upon you by your greatest name when you call upon by that name, you answer the call of your servants. O oh Allah, we beg you to grant us your protection. We beg you to grant us well-being. O oh Allah, we call upon you to grant your protection and care to us and to our families and to the people who submit to you. O oh Allah, we implore you to grant us well-being. And you are the most merciful of all who show mercy. Our Lord, forgive us for our sins and our faults. O oh Allah, you are the one who grants protection to those who beseech you. You are the one who bestows your bounty and none is free of needing you at any time. O oh Allah, we have come to you penitent and hoping for the good that lies with you. O oh Allah, we seek refuge from everything that would strip us of your blessings and would incur your wrath. O oh Allah, you are the one who knows all things, even the most concealed of matters. O oh Allah, we beseech you to send us your mercy and to save us from all harms. Our Lord, we beseech you to grant us forgiveness. O oh Allah, forgive us for the wrong we have done, intentionally and mistakenly. O oh Allah, we repent to you. O oh Allah, we return to you. O oh Allah, we call upon you alone to avert from us hardships, diseases, ailments, and epidemics. O oh Allah, we place our hopes in you. You are the one who is ever living and you never die. O oh Allah, you are the one who is in control of all things. And we implore you and none besides you. Our Lord, we beg you to grant us your forgiveness as you are certainly the continually forgiving. O oh Allah, we call upon you to protect the people who submit to you in Islam here in the precincts of your sacred house and in all lands where they are. O oh Allah, we cannot praise you sufficiently. Our Lord, we implore you to return us to you in the best way. And we implore you to grant us your care. O oh Allah, you are the one who grants protection to those who call upon you. O oh Allah, forgive us for the wrong that we have done. You are the one who can grant us goodness in ways that we do not even anticipate. O oh Allah, for our brothers who are suffering and ailing, we beseech you to grant them cure and allow them to recover. O oh Allah, we call upon you, the Lord of all creation. Servants of Allah, in conclusion, implore Allah to grant his commendation and protection to the best individual among all of creation. Allah instructed you to do so when he said, indeed Allah grants his commendation to the Prophet and the angels invoke Allah to grant him even further commendation. People of Iman, 
invoke Allah to grant the Prophet commendation and to grant him protection as well. O Allah, grant your commendation and protection to your Prophet. O Allah, be pleased with his four successors, Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, and Ali, as well as all of his family and companions. And all praise due to Allah, the Lord of all creation. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استووا أقيموا صفوفكم واعتدلوا الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصل النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده ربنا ولك الحمد الله أكبر 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 الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين ها 
هل أتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يومئذ خاشعة عاملة ناصبة تصلى نارا حامية تسقى من عين آنية ليس لهم طعام إلا من ضريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع وجوه يومئذ ناعمة لسعيها راضية في جنة عالية لا تسمع فيها لاغية فيها عين جارية فيها سرر مرفوعة وأكواب موضوعة ونمارق مصفوفة وزرابي مبثوثة أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبل كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر إلا من تولى وكفر فيعذبه الله العذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا حسابهم الله الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده ربنا ولك الحمد الله أكبر 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 السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله 